this is instantly, I suppose, on our radar because it's a woman, mm. because it's unusual. It, f it feels, I know this is the wrong thing to say, but it feels even w worse. Almost. Well, it's that maternal instinct, and we naturally think of females as being caring, nurturing, uh, and of course taking a great amount of responsibility in terms of caring. And as a result of that, sometimes we, we think of female sex offenders in the minority, but they certainly are greater than, than we knew. You know, back in 2010 when, some re so 2010, when some research was done with regards to convicted sex offenders, the increase was there. Only a very small percentage, you know, 1%. But what we do see is more reporting now. Uh, and in terms of the amount of reporting that's taking place, shockingly, research was done that 89% of people who reported female sex offenders for the first time weren't believed. And that tells you a lot about the gender imbalance and, and the fact that people naturally think, well, female sex offenders don't do that. And the biggest cases, of course, we know about is Vanessa George, the nursery nurse. Uh, we also know about the big cases, Fred and Rose West, mm. Myra Hindley. And in terms of typologies, we've got the co-offenders, so male and female. And in relation to this case, of course, is the single females, which are the teachers, and there's an increasing number of them. And there's, because there's so little known, profiling is quite difficult, I assume. It is quite difficult because uh, the amount of studies that are actually done into female sex offenders in particular are very, very few. There, there have been some done, but they're not large scale. They, they tend to be with quite small numbers. But that research is showing that female sex offenders are statistically, you know, much, much lower than male sex offenders. So, and partly for that reason, part, it's, it's all the more worrying when it comes to light because we're not used to, to seeing it. Mm. I, these days we are seeing an, an awful lot more of it in the press because I think uh, thankfully male victims are feeling far more confident to come forward especially in the wake of um, the, the Savile inquiry. Well it's interesting because uh, Detective Inspector Elf Sampson from Durham Police said that there may be more victims uh, said that uh, throughout the investigation we have been aware that there may be other people involved in this inquiry who may come forward as victims and we would like them to make the approach to us. And speaking about the two victims, she added, uh, they've uh, seen her have a successful glittering career, they've seen her praised by government, described as inspirational, I think it made it harder for them to come forward. I, it's just a strange thing that one of the research uh, projects that was done in America, I think, actually showed that those women who offend with younger boys are very, very often high flyers. Really? Yes. Yeah, so, so uh, what, would they, what on earth would they be getting out of it? Because in the case of this woman as well, it wasn't just one-offs, it was relationships. What could they possibly gain from it, emotionally, high intelligent women like that? I think whilst they are high intelligent, they are also quite vulnerable in mm. terms of some of their elements, so particularly when you look at female sex offenders on children. And the problem is, is we have very little research in the UK that's been done. There's been a few papers done, but very, very little. We have to go to the US and Canada for that research. It tends to be individuals who are uh, vulnerable. They're probably in a some kind of relationship where they feel fairly inadequate mm. through the male relationship. They also feel that they're actually helping the child. They're taking the child on a journey through into adolescence.